This is truly the darkest, most dankest, memeiest timeline out there, man. Because not only did we see points and goals and stars awarded to guys like Connor Garland and Oliver Ekman Larson for the Vancouver Canucks, but the Arizona Coyotes played the LA Kings today and they won 2-1. to one. The very first goal of the Arizona Coyotes preseason was scored by none other then Louis freaking Erickson. Dude, this goal, it was wild. This is like nothing I've ever seen before from Louis, at least in the past five years. He takes the puck from Dylan Genther, of all people. Yeah, that guy taken with the pick from Vancouver. He drops it off at the far left faceoff circle for Louis, who picks it up and just unleashes it to the goal. It goes in. And, I mean, how poetic would it be for Genther and Erickson to combine for a goal on the same night that Oliver Ekman Larson and Connor Garland do their thing in their Vancouver Canucks debuts. In fact, that's not even it, because the Arizona game ended with a score of 2-1. to one. Guess who scored the other goal? It was Dylan Genther, dude. Like, hockey gods. Come on, hockey gods. You guys are really starting to play with us now, and it's getting... Super annoying, because everything is so predictable. Erickson is going to get 50 goals. You have yourselves Dylan Genther, who's going to make the team straight off the bat and get 20. I don't know. There's going to be so much stuff going on with this team that is just going to mirror everything that we could have seen with the Vancouver Canucks. But either way... We have ourselves what is a package, ultimately, of some pretty interesting Vancouver Canucks moves. And by moves, I mean shimmy shammy Oliver Ekman Larson movement around the ice, because this guy was awarded the first star of the game, and I'm gonna say it right here, dude, he looked a lot better than what we have seen out of Ekman Larson in the past. And I don't mean the past as in, like, in his prime when he was getting 50-60 points in a year, but... In the previous few years, you know, the years that caused Ekman Larson to be seen as this negative asset that he is kind of labeled as today. This guy looked like mid-20s, maybe even early 20s Ekman Larson, smooth skating, good positionally, and some pretty good offensive puck skills. Ekman Larson was not bad. And so, as we talk about the Vancouver Canucks preseason game over here, the 4-2 Vancouver Canucks preseason win in Abbotsford, where the Canucks are going to play, the Abbotsford Canucks, by the way, we have ourselves what is a very, very cool game to see. Now, before we get underway with all the highlights and whatnot, though, I wanted to talk about this right here first, because the Vancouver Canucks did use today as an opportunity to remember all the children who went to school and did not come home, as well as all the other children and families who survived the atrocities of the residential school system as we begin recognizing National Truth and Reconciliation Week at our first home preseason game. We acknowledge the genocide of the indigenous community and are committed to do more towards the real truth and reconciliation process, starting with awareness from tonight. Going over to the Calgary Flames, though, this was kind of interesting because I was complaining yesterday about how the Vancouver Canucks pretty much iced an AHL team that included Besser, Hoaglander, and Rathbone against the main Seattle Kraken roster. Well, this game was kind of the mirror, because we had ourselves what was a Calgary Flame squad that was filled up with a whole bunch of guys that were just kind of... Meh. Like, I know, I like Glenn God and I like Jacob Pelche, I like a lot of the guys they iced out there individually, but just like, the team, you know? This was an AHL squad plus Mangiapani and Dan Vladar in net, for the most part, with a decor that consisted of a few talented guys, but just didn't have that same pedigree that the Calgary Flames defense system is particularly noted towards having in the regular season. So, this team came over into Abbotsford playing against the Vancouver Canucks squad that included Horvat, Miller, Podkolzin, Garland, Poolman, Myers, OEL. This was pretty much, more or less, 50-60% of the Vancouver Canucks regular lineup. And you had the bottom six of guys like Chase Waters and Jonah Gadjevich and Zach McEwen bouncing around in there as the 
filters, you know? These guys could come into the lineup sometime. They might be actual players in the regular season. Who really knows? But Lockwood, Highmore, these guys were all just kind of cycling around in there. And for the most part, we had some pretty good showcases from everybody throughout the lineup for the Vancouver Canucks. Things started out with a Connor Garland shot that is on the power play. It's Ekman Larson who sets it up. He gives it over to Garland, who drags it. He shoots it. It gets blocked, but the rebound, he still got it, man. He shoots it right by the goaltender. It's one nothing. Vancouver, and right away, everybody's like, ooh, great. Ekman Larson to Garland, he scores. And then in the other game in Arizona and LA, Erickson scores from Genther. It's kind of poetic how things go down that way. Speaking about the bottom six depth, though, we had ourselves what was a goal scored by Chase Waters, assisted by Will Lockwood and Jonah Gajovic to make things 2-0 10 minutes after the first goal. Jonah Gajovic was just an absolute ball of fire throughout all of training camp, or excuse me, development camp and all that stuff so far. So seeing this actually translate in a game where he kind of just pitter-patters his way down to the goal line, dekes around the sprawled-out defenseman, and sets up Waters in front for a goal... Absolutely beautiful play right there. I was surprised to see the numbers on the back of the jerseys right there because I was like, wait, Gajovic did that? What a great play from this guy. Give it three more minutes and the Vancouver Canucks on the power play once again. Get things done. It's Horvat, Chason, and Miller combining for a goal. This one was uh, it was kind of weird. It was a shot towards the net. Horvat was there in front. Chason was there in front. And Miller just kind of went over and batted it in backhand right by the goalie. He saw the loose puck. He was like, yeah, okay, I'm going to take that right there. Boop, it's in. The Vancouver Canucks had themselves a pretty diverse first period, and not even just these guys over here who got all the points, but even Pod Colson, Vasily Pod Colson looked pretty good for a good chunk of this first period with his forecheck and his aggressiveness. We kind of saw that he was a man playing with other men in this professional hockey league. He definitely did not look out of place. You had yourselves also what was some pretty interesting moves done by guys like Tyler Myers and Tucker Pullman. I honestly thought Pullman was a lot better than I thought he would be, but of course it is only one preseason game, so I'm definitely not going to go ahead and put an entire season's worth of stock into this performance. But Pullman was not bad, I think. Furthermore, in the second period, you had yourselves, it was the Flames coming back with two goals. Two goals where Michael DiPietro, unfortunately, was not able to see the first one. It was Dylan Dubé on the power play. He gets one right by because screened in front, DiPietro has to look around the guy, and it just beats him right there. The next goal, it is Connor Mackey, another long shot. It beats DiPietro. This is kind of one of those things where it's like, yeah, if you box out the guys in front of your short goaltender, he's probably going to be more likely to see those pucks coming in. And for the most part, what he was able to see, he was able to stop. The Abbotsford crowd got super used to chanting DiPietro's name in this one because, man, did that guy pop off in this hockey game. In fact, they played him the full 60 minutes. They went out there and just completely neglected Artur Silovs. They're like, okay, you kind of played yesterday. Let's play DiPietro all of today. And maybe that's why the Vancouver Canucks, the home team, decided not to have a shootout because they were like, okay, yeah, our goalie's kind of tired. We're good, fam. Then the third period comes along and the Vancouver Canucks actually get things going. It's a lot better of a third than it was a second. And it started off nicely with an Oliver ekman Larson play where he takes it off into the offensive zone, kind of curls in front on the blue line and drops it back to a streaking Tanner Pearson who comes in, he grips it, he rips it, Louis Erickson style over the shoulder. It's 4-2 Vancouver and that is our final score. Pearson was honestly kind of like a man on a mission in this game. He was just whipping it. Hard shots, fast shots, all over the offensive zone. I haven't done this, and I don't know if you're able to do this because it's a preseason game, but if you took a look at Tanner Pearson's shot charts in this game, you'd just see big dots everywhere, all over the offensive zone. He was at... The far face soft circle, half boards, the point, just whipping it. And you can kind of feel it, you know, just watching this guy wind up. He had a lot more oomph to his shots in this game compared to seeing Tanner Pearson play in every other game last year. And it works out because he gets one to go over the shoulder. He makes it 4-2, to two, and that is ultimately the ending score of this hockey game over here. The Flames then pulled their goalie with three minutes left in the third period because they wanted to try out their 6-on-5 play. And for the most part, the Vancouver Canucks actually did pretty well. Myers was able to 
to hang on, and in general, I thought he had a pretty all right game. Tucker Pullman was out there, so he was all right too. Lockwood, I thought he had a strong, strong game. He even bodied a few guys too. Michael Stone got a big hit from Lockwood and was thrown onto the ice because of it. Then you had yourselves what was a good showcase from a whole bunch of other Vancouver Canucks over here. I really did like JT Miller. I liked Bo Horvat, of course. And then Gadjevich went out there, did well. Chase on. I thought it was okay for what he was. I didn't really think he performed extraordinarily greatly. It was just, you know, he was kind of there. I think the assist he got was kind of lucky, but either way, he was a welcome addition to this team. Chase Waters getting himself a goal. Nice right there. I thought Dowling had himself a pretty all right game too, but either way, the Vancouver Canucks in their very first Abbotsford Canucks Arena game go out there, put on a show, the fans go home happy, and I turn off my streaming device happy as well. So talk to me in the comments, what do you think about the Vancouver Canucks going out there and beating the Calgary Flames in their very first preseason game in Abbotsford? I hope you enjoyed this. And bye.